Yo guys, welcome back to another episode of the KTM 250 two-stroke build, now brought to you by MX Locker, one of my longtime sponsors. If you guys are unfamiliar, you can think of MX Locker as sort of like a Facebook marketplace, but strictly for motocross parts. Thousands of users getting on every single day, uploading a bunch of their secondhand parts. I have a cabinet of old parts from my previous gen KTMs that I'm getting ready to list up. So if you guys have a KTM, keep an eye out on my profile for some good deals. If you guys are interested in checking that out, MX Locker gave me a $10 coupon for you guys to use and the code is just jaywalk so pretty simple hop on check it out save yourself some cash big thank you to the guys at mx locker rad people and a rad company so go check it out but anyways in our last episode we got the engine all beautified we took it up to nick at metro racing he did some vapor blasting on the cylinder did the top end, checked a bunch of tolerances and made sure the thing was ready to rip. And it got me so inspired that I got my own vapor cabinet up and running over there. The Vapor Honing Technologies Weekend Warrior. And uh, I decided to go ahead and spray the rest of this thing down and it turned out absolutely amazing. If you guys are interested in that process, go ahead and check it out. But in today's video, we're gonna be beautifying this thing even more because although it does look pretty nice and clean, it is missing some of the flair that we're looking to get out of it. I typically like to keep my things very factory, but even the factory KTMs have a little bit of bling on their engine. So I went ahead and ordered myself up some Cerakote and taught myself how to do some home garage Cerakoting and it is super simple. And today I'm gonna to teach you guys exactly how I did it and how you can do it the easiest way possible. I'm willing to bet you guys have heard of Cerakote before. It's becoming very popular due to its very high heat resistance and scratch resistant. You can heat this stuff up to like 1400 degrees before the paint starts to fail and that's why it's really common on engine parts. The factory KTM team coats their entire side cover, which is this whole cover here, the one that I didn't vapor black. Uh, they coat that whole thing black. So that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing. I tested it on the throttle housing here and it turned out really, really good. Then I also got a titanium color to do some of the other covers like the water pump cover. I might do that black, I'm not really sure, but the power valve covers. And then on the other side here, I'm gonna do the rad valve clutch master cylinder and the other cylinder cover in that titanium color it should look really cool. Always wanted to learn how to Cerakote, but the thing that turned me off was that it was kind of a complicated process. It was almost like powder coating where you have to bake the part in the oven for a certain amount of time, prep it really well, spray it, and then bake it again to cure the paint. And I was just like, bro, I'm not gonna do that. Bridget would be absolutely furious if I started putting dirt bike parts in our oven. So but luckily, not long ago, Cerakote released their C-Series Cerakote paint. This is the titanium C105, and this stuff is air cured, so you don't need to bake it at all. They still do recommend that you bake the part beforehand just to gas out any of the oils, but they say it's an optional step, and I didn't do it with any of the stuff that I have tested coating on so far and the stuff turned out great so I think as long as you wash it really really well with some acetone or brake clean I think it'd be absolutely fine to not bake the part the other thing that is very important for Cerakoting which is true for any painting that you're gonna be doing is prepping the surface really well luckily as I said I have the vapor blaster to get a nice even finish and kind of rough up the part so the paint sticks really well but if you guys don't have access to that you can definitely use something like a dry sand blaster or even if you just use sandpaper or scotch bright really well just to clean the part super well and get a nice even finish that should be enough and then the final thing you're gonna need is an air spray gun with a 0.8 millimeter tip and an air compressor that's capable of doing like 20 to 30 psi because that is what they recommend you spray this stuff at. this one was super cheap I want to say the whole kit was like 20 to 25 dollars on Amazon which I'll link down below with an affiliate link so you guys can go check that out but I think that's enough of a little introduction let's go ahead and start taking the pieces off that I want to Cerakote and I'll show you guys step by step how you can Cerakote in your garage super simply probably the easiest way to do engine coatings and hopefully I will help you guys make your bike look factory for the off season so when spring rolls around you're going to be looking super fly at the track half of going fast is looking good am i right so you want to be looking good first things first these are the two that i will be using c105 titanium this is like a very very light bronze metallic flake and some silver you've probably seen the burnt bronze that a lot of people use um i think it looks pretty cool but it's definitely way overdone so i was looking for something similar but a little more subtle and kind of natural looking which i kind of like that look i don't want these parts to super pop I just want it to look pretty natural and then the other one C138 jet black that's what I'm gonna be doing this whole side case on pretty cool stuff let's get tearing this thing apart I'll meet you at the line, but 
parts are removed it's time to super clean them and get them prepped for the vapor blast cabinet if you guys don't know the vapor blaster is a mixture of sand or glass bead and high pressure water super safe process but you definitely want to tape off a couple little areas that you don't want to get sand in such as the carbon fiber on the rad valve i thought this was a perfect opportunity to show you guys that you don't actually have to have a vapor blast cabinet in order to get a good finish so i decided to not vapor blast the rad valve vapor blasting is really versatile depending on what media and what pressure and how far away you get the nozzle you can get a really nice mirror chrome finish or you can use it to strip paint and other dirt and grime off the parts and that's what i'm using it for we're obviously not concerned with the finish of the product right now other than just getting it nice and smooth so the Cerakote has a good surface to connect to but as far as making it like a mirror that obviously doesn't really matter because we're going to be coating over it. So I'm running a very high pressure getting the nozzle right up close and personal just trying to get any dirt, grime, oils off that are going to potentially inhibit the Cerakote from sticking to the part. So I am cranking that pressure getting in there. I have a video of me vapor blasting this entire engine. Um, I'll link that up in the top right if you want to see that. Once everything is vapor blasted, you want to rinse all of the sand off and get this thing extremely clean. So just a garden hose will take care of that, no problem. And then it's back in the mineral spirits for one final clean just to get any of my hand oils off of it so that the Cerakote can stick really nicely. You do not want any oils on this stuff. It's especially important with the C-Series because we're not going to be putting this in the ovens, but check out the finish on these parts. It's almost a shame to Cerakote them after you put so much work in with the vapor blaster, but as we said, we want a little bling. So we're going to be Cerakote coating these things. Typically I would hang the parts up outside and spray them but it is a little bit chilly today and they say you don't want to be spraying when it's under like 32 degrees or something. It's not 32 but I don't want to take any chances so I set up this kind of makeshift little hanging rack here out of some rope and some light stands I had laying around for some of my filming equipment. All right all the parts are hung on my kind of makeshift little clothesline here. Um, I taped off some of the backs of the parts that I don't want any of the Cerakote coat to get on. What's really nice about the Cerakote is it is extremely, extremely thin layer. You don't have to tape off things like threads or surfaces where gaskets are gonna go or anything like that because it really, it's like microns thick. So don't need to tape off absolutely everything like you would if you were powder coating, but you know, you don't necessarily want the powder to go in like bearings and stuff. So maybe a little bit of taping you gotta do, but nothing too serious. So the parts are all ready to go. I'm gonna go get the gun sorted, put some of that titanium Cerakote in there and we'll get spraying. All right, now we got the gun, the hopper, the filters, of course the Cerakote, and last but not least, the mask, stay protected people. They say you wanna shake this stuff up for like five to 10 minutes. I guess there's some metallic in there that you wanna make sure is fully mixed up. So yeah, make sure you shake it well. Then you wanna use a 100 micron filter. This is very important. Keeps your gun clear and keeps the stuff spraying nicely. And then look at how nice that stuff looks. Whoo, this is when you start to get excited. The smell is pretty gnarly though. So I really recommend wearing that mask. Dial the air compressor back to around 20 to 30 PSI and then do some test of shots. They say you want like a three to four inch oval. I'm going to be doing some smaller parts so I opted to go for a little bit of a tighter pattern and then I don't like a lot of material to come out at all. I like to do many passes with a very light spray rather than doing like one or two passes with a thick spray. So I find it just makes it a little bit easier and less likely that you're gonna get some runs. I found it best to start off in all of the tightest little nooks and crannies with a bit of a tighter spray. Then you can open up the fan a little bit for the more open and flat areas that are easy to get to, but I find that it's easy to neglect the tighter areas and then once you're all done, and the thing is dried, you kind of find out that you missed some of those little tighter nooks and crannies. So I always start with the tighter stuff and the edges and kind of work my way to the easier areas from there. Like I said, very, very light coats. After the first one, you're almost not gonna be able to see much of the color, but that's okay. The stuff flashes really quickly, so you can go back and recoat pretty much by the time you're done spraying the last part. So I did about three coats with this stuff, keeping it super, super light every time, and the finish turned out incredible. Make sure you stay shaking the gun every now and then just to keep that metallic from mixing too far in. Between coats, I let the gun sit for a minute and the first time I sprayed, it was almost all metallic flake that came out, which actually was kind of a cool 
cool vibe, but not what I was going for. So make sure you're shaking that up pretty regularly. This doesn't use a lot of paint at all. So those little like four ounce test bottles that I got were more than plenty to coat all of this stuff. I have, I still have like half the bottle left. So a little bit goes a long way, but there is some crazy overspray that gets into the air and kind of settles on stuff. It doesn't stick to anything, but there is like bronze metallic flake on some of my parts over on the bench after I did this. So yeah, I definitely recommend spraying outside, but you can get away with it indoors if you need to. I ended up spraying that right side cover in black as well as the water pump cover. And dude, this turned out great. I ended up doing that outside, which worked out a lot better. It was a little windy and a little cold, but it still turned out absolutely fine. Nothing got in the paint, so it ended up looking really good. But the black and that titanium are such a good contrast color. Really glad I went with something a little more subtle than the burnt bronze. I think these two look really good together. And just the finish and everything turned out super good. I am just so happy with it, and it was so easy. I am nowhere near close to a professional painter or anything like that. Honestly, I'm pretty impatient too, so painting has never been my strong suit, and I was able to make this turn out perfect. So highly recommend it to you guys all right 24 hours later and my goodness this stuff is looking epic if i do say so myself nice even finish on everything that process was insanely easy um, i would highly recommend using this stuff obviously we'll have to see how it holds up that whole side engine case turned out really nice as well so really excited to get that stuff on the bike there's a little visual of what those two colors are gonna look like together I think that's a super nice compliment it's gonna look really cool on the bike I love this bronze color like I said I wanted the bronze but something a little more understated than the typical burnt bronze and uh, yeah that titanium color looks rad go ahead and pull these down get them on the bike and take one final look at it of course we're not gonna want to put that stock clutch cover back on so we're gonna go ahead and put a recluse clutch cover on as well just to kind of complete the build because that thing would look way too ugly on there. So go ahead and throw the stuff on the bike, see how the finished product turned out. Freaking unreal. Oh my gosh. Even threw the new Lectron 38 Pro Series carburetor on there just for good measure to get it mocked up. But dude, I could not be happier with the colors on this thing. Actually wasn't intentional, but the titanium coated stuff matches the recluse clutch cover pretty well. Actually on camera, it kind of looks like it doesn't, but in person, they're, they're pretty similar. The clutch cover is just a little bit darker. But yeah, the finish on this turned out stupendous. I'll put a picture up on the screen of what it looked like before just to give you guys a little refresher. Um, and kind of give you a good idea of what a little Cerakote and cleaning up action can do for your old engine. Check out the other side real quick. I like which pieces I chose to do which colors as well. It's kind of nice. It goes back and forth like bronze, black, bronze, black, bronze, if you can see the rad valve, black. Kind of a nice mixture like big black pieces separated by just a little bit of bronze, which I think looks really pro and uh, nice in the factory. So there is one more piece of jewelry to go on this engine. And that is the beautiful orange anodized fathead racing head to go on this machine. Looks epic. They even went ahead and engraved a little Walker Motorsports logo in there. Really cool. These guys have been a supporter of the channel for a long time. I think they supplied the head for my CR250 Nikki Hayden build like years ago. Dudes are super rad. They make awesome parts. So very excited to throw this on. I think we might as well go ahead and throw it on and see how it looks. So let's do that. Cool about the fat head is that you can see there's this big opening in the bottom for all of these different domes to fit in and you can customize the compression with these domes, but only using one head, which is pretty cool. So you can see here we have the SX10, which is stock. SX11 is plus one compression, SX12 plus two compression, and then SD this is the stank dog cut so <laughs> i'm excited to try all of these out i'm going to start off with the stock one just so that i can get a good base setting and then i'll probably make a video testing out the higher compression and then the stank dog tune as well so we'll pop this one in and then put it on well needless to say the fit and finish is incredible and i'm finishing off this entire engine build with the nickel plated spec bolt kit that includes the head studs and everything so the shiny bolts on the austrian bike really just make it look super factory that dull paint that they put on the stock austrian bolts are kind of a bummer so if you want to liven up your build make sure you pick up a spec bolt nickel plated shiny bolt kit as well final torque spec on the head and this thing is finally ready to rip well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That engine turned out insanely rad. I hope you guys like the color combo we went with. Can't wait to see that thing in the bike. And then also, I'm interested to see how well the Cerakote is gonna hold up. I've never had anything Cerakoted on one of my dirt bikes before, but after I ride the two-stroke a couple times, I'll give you guys a little update and show you 
how the air cured is doing. I'm blown away by it and man, I'm just having a ton of fun learning how to do some of this stuff. I grew up as the youngest dude in the family, obviously my dad and then my older brother. So most of the mechanical stuff was all handled for me through my like younger days, riding 85s, 125s and stuff like that. And then on top of that, we never really did too much of it ourselves anyways. We were really tight with championship power sports. So whenever we needed something done, they just kind of handled it for us. I never really saw myself as being someone who would be capable of doing stuff like this. And yeah, to some people, this might not seem like a lot, but I'm pretty stoked with the new skills and the confidence that I'm learning and just how far my knowledge and skill base has come. So it's really sweet to see an engine like this and know that you know, it was 100% me that did it. Um, but you guys know I'm a racer, so I am ready to put this thing back together and rip it, which should be the next episode. We'll probably get the engine back in. And then there's a heap of other parts over there against the wall. We've got some more stuff to Cerakote over there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna show it on camera since I already did this extensive Cerakote video, but yeah, pretty soon we'll be putting that thing back together. And then very shortly, my shoulder will be ready to rip and this bike will be ready to rip. So, so yeah, if you guys were wondering about the uh, Cerakote C-Series, I give it two thumbs up. Well, I can only give it one right now because my other hand is holding the camera, but yeah, stoked. Things turning out rad. Thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, we'll catch you in the next video. Peace out. Take me out into